Hey guys, how we doing? I'm back out wrenching in the garage and I'm going to take you along and kind of show you what uh, stuff I'm uh, playing around with today. The uh, That mule that I uh, traded a friend of mine, uh, my TW for, eh, three weeks ago, something like that. I did a bunch of preliminary stuff on it, just kind of get it up and working pretty good. And now I'm uh, in the process of tackling the rust. It had a, uh, I don't know you want to call it a dump bed, it's supposed to be uh, it's the capacity of being a dump bed anyway and uh, it was used on a horse farm and the caca sat in the corners and rotted it right out you can kind of see there's a before on that side and uh, here's kind of an after uh, my neighbor a couple houses down he does uh, demo work and he's uh, I think he's uh, doing demo work for MIT the college and uh, they're removing a mezzanine and this is some of the steel from there see where the holes are is where it was screwed down and it was uh, he was trying to get me a larger sheet uh, but for now he just kind of scored me this uh, 8 foot by I think 14 inches wide piece so uh, I pretty much split that in half and uh, patching up the two sides of it I was going to do a, uh, a butt weld but I ended up overlapping it about two inches because there's a piece of framework underneath here and it was kind of a pain in the ass to grind off the old weld so uh, this is what's what it's going to go with kind of see what we got so it'll work it'll make it stronger again uh, and then while I was doing that I had this uh, uh, cylinder it's actually a electric tongue um, jack that would go like on the front of a trailer and it would have a button on top of it and you would sit a crank in it by hand you are uh, electrically it goes up and down and um, I grabbed that at a yard sale because the, the plastic uh, uh, cap on the top of it and the switch was busted and missing. So uh, I grabbed it for two bucks and two wires coming out of the motor. I just jump it and it does power in and power out so it does still work. I was thinking about using that for lifting this thing but the problem with it is one it's it's just so long. Um, if you could see kind of where it travels to down there. Let me show you underneath the machine. And the fact that, where is it? There it is. Hey, you see how much is sticking out underneath that frame there? That you can't really have that, it'll end up getting clocked if someone's using the machine. So unless I can find a better position for it, uh, I'm gonna scrap that idea. Uh, it actually would work pretty good though if I, if I can get it in place. And the other problem is, you can't center it because of where the motor is. So I'm not quite sure what, I should probably look it up and see what a, what a regular mule with the dump bed how they went about hooking it up but I have a feeling it might be two cylinders speaking of which I have two cylinders uh, problem is though the stroke the length of them when they're closed is too long they're 24 inches when they're closed and uh, I would guess there's you know be more than enough in the in the open position but uh, the problem is trying to fit it all in something like this I figure out where I left my tape measure I don't know uh, but what happens is you go back as far as you can say at this point and you measure 24 inches forward it comes to about right here and if you look at where that comes to here it's only I don't know 10 inches from the pivot point that's not too good you probably want it at least 20 uh, you kind of want to lift from the center the center of whatever you're trying to lift and uh, I think that would be pretty good I could drop that one down a little bit after I make some framework underneath it so I don't know, that, that's still in progress. I'm not sure what I'm, what's gonna happen with that. Uh, I'm probably am gonna sell this. I may use it for a little bit, but uh, I'll end up selling it. So it comes into how much more value do you put into it compared to how much work you're putting into it. Again, the steel work makes you know a world of difference from making it a thousand dollar machine to a, say a $2,000 machine after you painted it up and it's everything working like it should. Um, the electric lift will probably make it worth another 500 bucks. So, So we'll see. And somebody also asked, um, oh, here's the, uh, here's the side panels. You kind of see they're, they're pretty much gone too. This is where it bolted onto down below. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up slicing this right off and I'm gonna take a uh, bed rail frame and weld that on and give it a nice strong corner again and uh, make them all nice and pretty. And, uh, right now they're nothing, nothing to it. So, oh, where was I? And someone asked me about how I made the throttle on that, um, electric uh, gas-powered um, flexible flyer 
and most of the bikes coming out now, the cheaper bikes anyway, the shifters that are on them, you know, the bikes that are like mountain bikes and all, they have like this ratchet looking shifter on it. And um, they, uh, it kind of looked like it had the right motion to me what I wanted to use for some kind of throttle. And again, I'm not much on spending money on this kind of stuff. I like to make it out of garbage, as you guys may have figured out by now. So at first I was gonna go with like a lever st uh, style, but they're, they're kind of hard to control. You can't like, uh, I wanted to use that thing to walk behind me and be able to give it a little bit of throttle. That would be kind of hard to do with a lever. So um, I looked at this, which is, uh, it's actually this girl's funky looking uh, masquerade grip shift there we go um made in china piece of shit that somebody threw out and uh, so we stole the parts off of it and i opened them up to try to figure out what was on the inside so i'll show you what's up with them proppy on the vice over here and should actually put it back together first there we go so what you got is just like a you know, regular click kind of ratchet shifter. So I wanted to see what was on the inside of there, what, what held them. Um, to remove them from the bike, there's a little set screw. You can pull the whole assembly right off. I just ended up cutting the cable off because I needed um, a real long length of cable, which I'll get to in a minute. But uh, if you don't have that far to go to the motor, you can um, probably use the cable that's already on the bike. So there's like a little plastic um, retainer right there I say you could try prying that up with a screwdriver but I found that it's, it's kind of the thing that goes together once and that's it let me back up a little before I take anything apart I generally like the mark you see the mark on there you won't show up on the black but I could see it and I put a mark on there just so I know where things kind of came apart and I could figure it out like sometimes you open them up and shit goes everywhere so uh, I opened it up and you can at the time you could see the cable kind of doing like a 360 all the way around and I just kind of eyeballed it and figured out how it worked and um, from there uh, I ended up just taking the cable right out of it and when I opened it up you could see that little ratchet piece on the inside I think it's just sticking in there there's really nothing holding it you can actually just pop that right out of there and uh, put them back together and now it's just a rolling throttle so uh, I ended up taking uh, this thing right here. This is um, from Walmart. They sell uh, complete bike cable replacement kits. And I think there's five in here. Four or five cables that are in here. And they go anywhere from like five feet long to, um, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, four cables. And some of them are for the brake cables and some of them are for the shifters. I find the shifter cables are, are fairly long. They're about six feet in uh, length and they have an, an end on both sides. So I figure, I look at the one that was already on there and I take that and I cut the opposite side off. From that, you can uh, feed it through and it actually ended up sitting right inside there's where the cable uh, threaded through and it came out, came out through here. And then on the other end of it, you kind of run it, run your cable all the way down to wherever you're going to run to. Let me pop one of these out of here. Here's another one. Another uh, shifter cable. I think they're both maybe the same length. But if you look at it, you'll see that um, they have two different ends on them. Got that size. Where are you? Got that guy and that guy. So whatever one that you have is the one that you keep. And the other one, what I like to do is before you cut it, just uh, hit it with a soldering gun and some flux, and that'll hold all this stuff from coming apart. And then you could either either cut it with like a whiz wheel or whatever, and it, and it keeps it from spreading out on you. And then you can run that the length of the bike that you want. And then you could actually take it um, if you're cable is too long you actually do the same thing with this black jacket you can actually just cut this with a with a whiz wheel and um, make it the length that you want and then the kit comes with um, the little ferrules that go over the end of it you can see those and you can just patch it right back up again and uh, that's pre pretty much what I make all my cables out of um, if it's something really heavy I, I, I make linkages but uh, as far as like cable stuff for throttles and everything these are like eight bucks and uh, I mean you can't beat it for uh, all the stuff you get to work with and it's all new you know 
you want them to last or uh, have very little resistance, I like to use uh, transmission fluid. And I put them in a little squirt bottle like this. And uh, if you wet the cables, it um, it's good. It doesn't cause any kind of drag. Like if you have a lot of oil over a whole length of something, actually you get a little bit of drag, like say grease. It's too much. But if you go too light with like WD-40, it just kind of washes away over time. So I found uh, training fluid to be the best for that kind of stuff. So I hope that throttle piece kind of helps you out there. And, uh, you know, again, I just kind of look at anything that I need to make and uh, I'll take essentially stuff that's considered, you know, useless or trash that people are throwing out. And I just grab the stuff and, and have at it, you know, it's, it, what are you going to lose? You, if you screw it up, you throw it away, you know. And again, a lot of this stuff, you know, pretty much wherever you are, you can find this stuff free or next to nothing. Uh, yard sales, you always, I always see bikes for like five, ten bucks. And uh, they're great things to, to pick pieces off of and make stuff out of. Um, generally, they're pretty much all steel. All the cheap ones are steel. And that makes them easy to weld and cut and, and fabricate with. And uh, they're actually pretty strong, too. So, all right, guys. I'm going to be uh, done gabbing. I'm going to get back to work and see if we can get the other side done before the day's up. And uh, thanks for watching, commenting, thumbs up, thumbs down, and, you know, take care. Bye.